Hi there, it's Mike Thornton from Pro Tools Expert, and today I'm going to take you on a tour around the new AX version of the Enimix Pro plugin from EOSono. Now, this plugin is in fact really two plugins in one. It is a surround panner, so I can move the sound around the image. But of course, you're listening to it in a downmix version because I can't create a surround track on YouTube videos. But of course, it will mean that you are experiencing the quality of the downmix from the output from the plugin. So, yeah, I can move things around. I can also spin it. You can see that there's no end stop to this, so we can keep going round and round and round. Just click the Alt button to bring it back to the default position. I can increase the depth, so we can make the sound deeper. And you see that I can move the sound source outside of the speakers. So we can increase the depth, we can also increase the width. So again, just hit the Alt to bring back those back to their defaults. But as a surround panel, it's got another trick up its sleeve, and it's this distant dependent feature. So I can turn this on, and what it means is that as I move the sound source outside of the speakers, as it gets further away, it'll reduce the loudness just as it would in real life and also the EQ will make it duller as we move further away. So again, if we just play that, it gets quieter. And you'll notice, you can see how the icons also come together, because again, a sound further away outside of our sound image is really just going to be a point source. It's not until it gets closer do we get some sense of image width. just hit the alt key to bring it back to the center. So those are really useful and just as you have on fade in and fade out, you can change the shape of the curve as to how the loudness changes or how the EQ changes. And then there's this advanced button up here which also enables us to tweak the way that the loudness works and the way that the EQ works and the the frequency of which the EQ cuts off. So all of that is there and available in the advanced section. So we can just click that to close it. So we can move the sound around. And of course, any of these things are automatable. I can load those in from the usual Pro Tools plugin automation curve and then put Pro Tools automation into record and record these movements. So that's a brief look at the surround panel half of the plugin. Now I'm going to look at the upmix. So I'm going to change audio sources. So we're going to just scroll down the track uh, and we'll start here with a bit of classical music. So let's look at the plugin that's driving that. So here we are in the upmix mode. So we've enabled the upmix option just down here. And then we've got a range of different presets. So this is a bit of classical music. So let's just initially go music mix classical. And that brings up a preset. And you can see here that we've got a certain amount of divergence, the stage width. So what happens with the upmix mode is that basically what the plugin will do is to analyze the audio as it comes in. And anything that it considers to be ambient, so reverb, early reflections from a room space, anything like that, it will put into the ambient section. And then anything that it considers the direct sound, so dry, tight sounds, it will put into the direct section. So it splits it between direct and ambience. Then we've got control over both the direct elements and the ambience elements. Of course, what this means is that if the sound we're processing has no real room information, so for instance, it's something like my voice now in a dry studio mono microphone, 
there's going to be very little that the plugin can do to process that because there is very little additional room information in the audio that's coming into the microphone. But if there is, I mean, again, it could be mono. If there is some reverb or early reflections in the audio, then the plugin can analyze that and start to put that out into the other channels. So we can upmix even a mono channel. So let's take a look at how that works. So here we go. So I can increase the stage width. I can modify the divergence. So what happens with the center channel? So maximum divergence, nothing's been put into the center channel. As I bring it back, everything that was aimed for the center channel goes only into the center channel. It's not panned out into the left and right. So that's our usual divergence with our stereo width. And then we can dry that up. So what the dry wet control is doing is the amount of ambience that's being split out into this side, we can actually mix some of that into the front. So if we have it fully dry, then the ambience is only going into the surround side. Whereas if we go fully wet, then we've got a full amount of the ambience both going to the surround and into the direct, which is being routed largely to the fronts. So moving on to the ambient side, we can adjust the amount of ambience so we can take it all out altogether, and you can see that the GUI is giving us that indication. We can adjust the position, so how, how front heavy it is, how rear heavy it is. And then this low pass filter here is basically just rolling off the high end to make sure that we don't get any particular hiss type sounds in our ambient channel. And then the delay control here, effectively, you can hear the artifacts as I adjust it, but in essence, it's making the room bigger. It's pushing the walls back of the space that we are creating to create this 5-1 upmix version of the audio. So we've got our direct and our ambient. So Let's just play that again. And so at the moment, we just go to one of perhaps one of the neutral ones. I tend to prefer to use the neutral sounds. So if we just play that now. So this is the standard preset. And what you're listening to is the down mix of the up mix. And if I just now flip over here, that's the original stereo audio. So that's the stereo audio. That's the down mix of the up mix. And you can hear that they are very, very close. So original, and then the down mix of the up mix. So let's try that on some sound effects. So we've got some heavy traffic here. So what I'm gonna do now is to go in and choose a different preset. So I'm gonna use the movie stem Atmos neutral. So that's the down mix of the up mix, and here's the original. So you can hear there that the down mix of the up mix and the stereo are very, very similar. And then there's one other thing with regard to the up mix that's in the advanced tab, and this is this option here because this enables us to, when we turn this on, if the stereo content that I'm feeding the Upmix plugin is matrix encoded, so for instance, it's LTRT, so it's come from some form of Dolby encode that was created in Dolby Pro Logic, and all you have is the 
LTRT, you don't have access to the original surround mix, you've just got the combined LTRT. Then this changes the algorithm so that it, it can effectively pull out the surround information based on the standard ProLogic LTRT encoding. So again, that's a really nice feature as part of the Upmix plugin. So in conclusion, the <clears throat> So in conclusion, this is a really, really useful plugin because in many respects it is a sort of two-in-one plugin. It is a surround panner and it has what I think is still a unique feature in that if we go back to the surround version, I can take the sound outside of the image and then there's also these distant dependence features here as well. So that makes it a really, really powerful surround panner and then if we go back to the upmix option, then we've got all these useful presets, which again, just as so often is the case, presets are starter for 10. You can then go in and adjust the direct signal and the ambient signal to suit the content that you're working with. And we can use the distance dependence and the upmix to do two things at once. So if we now just go back a little bit along the track here, so what I've got here is a car passing sound effect. As you can see, it's a stereo effect. So we've got the Enimix Pro and I've got it in upmix mode because it's a stereo sound effect. And I've got the loudness and the EQ distance dependent features turned on. And what I've done is I've already automated this. You can see here that I've got an automation lane pan left, right, and another automation lane pan front to rear and so what we can do is we can just play that and you'll see in the GUI what happens so you can see it's up mixing and it's doing the full panning as well just with these two automation lanes enabled of course I could go in and record this by actually putting the automation in to right and then dragging it across, or you can go in and draw the automation. The great thing about using the automation record is if you were using lots of different parameters all at once, then it does mean that all those different parameters would all get recorded as long as you've remembered to put the appropriate parameters into the automation options. So as you can see, it's a really, really powerful plugin. We've got the surround panning, which we can also use in conjunction with the up mixing. So we've got the surround panner that we can use for our surround content. We can use it for up mixing, stereo audio, sound effects, music, dialogue. As long as there is some ambient content in the material, then the Animix Pro plugin can create a direct and an ambience path and route those accordingly into the surround channels. And then of course we've got the option as you just saw to combine the two together, the upmix and the surround panel to get great sounding drive passes. So there we go. I hope that's given you an insight into the new AX version of the Enimix Pro version from EOSONO. I'll see you again soon.